There are many questions that a newcomer to an Orthodox Church might ask when they enter. One of the simple ones that we're going to have a look at today is, what's with all the candles? There is a joke amongst Eastern Orthodox Christians that goes something like, how many Orthodox Christians does it take to change a light bulb? And the answer is, none, we'll just use candles. And it's true that Orthodox and traditional Catholics use candles all over the place. And it is true that candles in worship go back to the earliest days of our faith in the Old Testament. But it's not enough to say that they are only there because electric light wasn't invented yet and that they're only there to cast light. There's something more to it. Because if you go to an Orthodox church today, we have electric lights, but we haven't got rid of our candle stands or our oil lamps, and we won't, because they mean something far more than pure and simple utility. Today we are going to take a short introductory look into the history of light in Christianity. We're going to look at some of the meaning that we can find in the flames, and we will also have a short look at a famous light from the Old Testament that still burns in the church today. Fundamentally, candlelight represents the light of Christ. It's what he does. He came into the world to bring light. He brings light into our hearts. The light of Christ illumines all. And while we can say that that same symbolism and beauty of light can be seen in an electric light bulb, it doesn't quite have the same impact in that same beautiful imagery as we can see in a flickering flame. God once spoke to Moses through a burning bush. He guided the people of Israel through a pillar of fire. Tongues of fire appeared above the apostles at Pentecost. And in the book of Exodus, God is very clear in his instructions of how he wants his people to build the temple lamps. Oil lamps are mentioned throughout the Old Testament in Psalms and Proverbs by several of the prophets, and Jesus himself mentions them through parable. Burning light has been a part of our worship for as long as history has been here. In another episode of Patristics, we made brief mention of a document written by Roman authorities in the city of Sirta in North Africa. The Romans had raided a Christian house church. They had arrested the Christians and the government had made a very careful list of the things they had confiscated from this secret church. And amongst those things were several beautiful candlesticks and lampstands. We have also spoken about the Christians that used to worship in the Roman catacombs there in the darkness, worshipping by the light of candles and oil lamps. In the second century, the historian Tertullian makes it clear that Christians never hold a service without burning candles, even if it is broad daylight, because it represents the light of Christ, without whom even the brightness of day would still just be darkness. In the third century, the historian Eusebius writes that during the Paschal or Easter liturgy, which happens late at night, it seems like daylight for the amount of candles that there are burning inside every single church. So for the entirety of Christian history, we can see that candles and oil lamps have been a part of the scene when it comes to worshipping God. In a letter written at the very end of the 5th century, St. Jerome briefly mentions the beauty of candles in Christian worship. Throughout the whole Eastern Church, whenever the Gospel is to be read, the candles are lighted, not of course to scatter the darkness, but by way of evidencing our joy. As well as joy, a candle represents a prayer. When a Christian comes into a church and lights a small candle, they are adding a prayer into the life of the church. They are adding some light to the light that is already in the church. By purchasing a candle, they are supporting their church, and by lighting it, they are participating in their church. The 19th century Saint Nicodemus of the Holy Mountain says that candles represent our sins burned away, that they represent the light of God who is light, and that they represent the light that we are told by Christ to shine before men, that they may glorify our Father in heaven. Saint Nicodemus also says that when we light candles as Christians, we do honor to the memory of our saints and heroes from the early church that lit candles there in the darkness of the catacombs. Around 500 years before Saint Nicodemus, Saint Simeon of Thessaloniki also writes about some of the symbolism of candles that we should remember. Saint Simeon writes of pure beeswax candles and that our souls should be as pure as that beeswax. He also writes with a warning that beeswax candles are very soft and bendable, so we need to make sure that our souls stay straight and firm in the gospel, that we don't allow them to be bent and shaped 
by other things around us. As an interesting aside, beeswax candles are still the preferred candles in the Orthodox Church, and in many places it is a traditional gift for priests to give them beeswax candles and oil, because those are two things that they will always find a use for. St. Simeon also reminds us that beeswax candles have a beautiful scent, and that we are to be reminded to fill our souls with the aroma of divine grace. And like St. Nicodemus 500 years later, St. Simeon also writes of the importance of the candles to represent the light that we are called by Jesus to shine before men. The history of the Christian church is full of many stories and tales and accounts and wisdom that surround the use of candles and oil lamps. And there is just simply too much to put in one episode. But I do want to give a little bit of a story about a very famous light from the Old Testament. In the book of Exodus, God is very clear about what kind of lights he wants to put into his holy place. And he describes a seven branched oil lamp. This is commonly known as a menorah. The word menorah literally means lamp. There were menorahs in the tabernacle and later in the temple all throughout the history of the Old Testament. Then came the invasions from Greece. The temple was cleared out, the candle stands were melted down and destroyed. After the Maccabean revolt, new menorahs were recast and put back into the temple. Then came the destruction of the temple in the first century. A large menorah from the temple was stolen and taken to Rome where it was paraded through the streets and then placed for public display in the somewhat ironically named Temple of Peace, which was this Roman place where they stored the things that they had won from conquered peoples around the world. In the 5th century, the Vandals attacked Rome, and from here the story of the menorah gets a little bit sketchy. It seems that they then took the menorah from Rome to Carthage, their home city. A hundred years after that, the Byzantines took the city of Carthage and they found the menorah there. The menorah went from Carthage to Constantinople, where the Emperor Justinian decided that it was best to send it back to Jerusalem. And that's where the story ends. The menorah disappears from history at this point. It is one of those lost treasures that no one has ever found. The menorah has been a symbol of the Jewish people for centuries, and much longer than the Star of David, which is more familiar now. However, the menorah is also a Christian symbol and appears in old Christian art, in old Christian churches, and in old Christian documents there alongside the cross and other Christian symbols. The menorah has been a part of our history, a part of our worship, right back into the days of the Old Testament. So if the menorah was so important to our ancestors of the Old Testament, if it was so important to the early Christians, where is the menorah in Christian worship today? And the answer is, it is where it has always been, there in the temple. And by temple, I mean every single Orthodox church on earth. Next time you go to an Orthodox service on a Sunday, look for the seven lights. You will find them at the altar, standing there and burning to the glory of God, as they have been since the days of Moses. It is a faith that we continue into this day. We are maintaining symbolically, practically, and internally the same flame that burned for our ancestors. It is the light of Jesus Christ, and it will burn for all eternity. Thank you for watching this special candle lit episode. It was a real pleasure to set up this set to look the way it does. Today we are drinking pure tea, which is very delicious and warming. If you want to know more about candles, please do go check out an Orthodox church. It is a real honor and a blessing to worship in a place in which there is this candlelight history from centuries and centuries past.